The ACE in ACE inhibitor stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. As the name implies, ACE inhibitors are drugs that block the activity of an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. These are the most commonly prescribed ACE inhibitors. Note that their names all end in PRIL, which distinguishes them as a drug group with the same actions to inhibit ACE. Two of these drugs, captopril and lisinopril, are active in their own right. The other drugs are what we call pro-drugs. That means that they are not active themselves, but are broken down in the body by liver enzymes into the active molecule. The first drug of this group to be discovered was captopril, and this is its chemical structure. The active components of all the drugs contain this part of the structure, which enables them to bind to the same site in the enzyme and inhibit its activity. The main effect of blocking ACE is to lower blood pressure. Consequently, the ACE inhibitors are widely used in the treatment of hypertension and heart failure. By blocking ACE activity, the ACE inhibitors interfere with the renin-angiotensin hormone system. To appreciate the importance of this, you need to know what the renin-angiotensin system is and how it works. The starting point is angiotensinogen, a large globular protein that is synthesized in the liver. As it circulates around the body, the end terminus of the protein gets cleaved to release a short 10 amino acid peptide called angiotensin 1, but also known as proangiotensin. The cleavage is catalyzed by an enzyme made in the kidney called renin. The more renin is secreted into the blood, the more circulating angiotensinogen will be cleaved. And factors that influence the amount of renin secreted include blood pressure, the sodium concentration in plasma and the sympathetic nervous system. As angiotensin 1 circulates in blood, it passes through the heart and out to the lungs, which contain a large amount of the enzyme ACE. As angiotensin 1 passes through the lungs, ACE cleaves it further into an octapeptide known as angiotensin 2. The last two amino acids at the carboxy terminus of angiotensin 1, histidine and leucine, are removed to form angiotensin 2. As it circulates around the body, angiotensin 2 has some powerful effects that cause hypertension. The ACE inhibitors stop ACE from cleaving angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and therefore prevent its hypertensive action. So, how does angiotensin 2 cause hypertension and why does blocking ACE prevent this? Angiotensin 2 affects two main organs the arteries and the kidneys. We will look first at the arteries. Angiotensin II circulating in blood can access cells in the walls of arteries. Of most importance are the smooth muscle cells that wrap around the wall of the vessel. Angiotensin II binds to angiotensin AT1 receptors on the smooth muscle cells and that causes the cells to contract. As the muscle cells shorten, arteries constrict, reducing the internal volume. That raises the pressure inside the artery, causing a rise in blood pressure. Activating the muscle AT1 receptors has the additional effect of stimulating hyperplasia and hypertrophy, which results in narrowing of the vessels. This happens on a much slower time scale, but also causes blood pressure to rise. 
Vasoconstriction is also stimulated by 81 receptors on sympathetic nerve terminals that innervate the artery wall. Acting on these receptors, angiotensin II increases the release of noradrenaline, effectively amplifying the effects of sympathetic nerve stimulation. Now let's turn to the kidney. It is affected indirectly by angiotensin II. The direct effect of angiotensin II is on the adrenal glands, which sit just above the kidneys. As circulating angiotensin II reaches the cortex of the adrenal gland, it activates AT1 receptors, which stimulate secretion of the steroid hormone called aldosterone. When aldosterone reaches the kidney, it stimulates the retention of sodium and water while increasing the excretion of potassium. The result is an increase in plasma volume, which in turn increases cardiac output. This also leads to a rise in blood pressure. All of the effects described here are suppressed by ACE inhibitors. Drugs can intervene at several points in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. There are as many angiotensin receptor blockers as there are ACE inhibitors, and their names all end with Zartan, indicating a common action to block AT1 receptors. These drugs are competitive antagonists at AT1 receptors competing with angiotensin II for binding. In this way, they make it harder for angiotensin II to activate the AT1 receptor and produce the effects I've described. This class of drugs is also widely used to treat hypertension and is prescribed as an alternative to patients that cannot tolerate ACE inhibitors due to side effects. They are as effective as ACE inhibitors. A newer class of drug is the renin antagonists, with only one, aliskyrin, approved for therapeutic use. These drugs inhibit the enzyme action of renin, which is the first and rate-limiting step in the production of angiotensin II. They therefore prevent the production of angiotensin I as well as angiotensin II. Renin inhibitors are a more selective way of interfering with the pathway than ACE inhibitors because angiotensinogen is not the only substrate for ACE. The renin inhibitors are used to treat hypertension and are at least as effective as ACE inhibitors at lowering blood pressure. Aldosterone antagonists act downstream of angiotensin to inhibit the effect of aldosterone released from adrenal cells. Two are approved for clinical use, spironolactone and eplerinone. As aldosterone promotes the retention of sodium but loss of potassium in the distal convoluted tubules and collecting ducts of the kidney, the antagonists promote the opposite, sodium loss and potassium retention. They are therefore known as potassium sparing diuretics and are used to produce diuresis without hypokalemia. These drugs have no effect on the vascular actions of angiotensin.